Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another PvP strategy analysis from Guild Wars 2. Today we're going to be checking out a retaliation build Guardian. It's a very popular build at the moment so you're going to see how to play one or how to combat one in this video. So first up in our weapon sets we've got the greatsword and in the offhand we've got the uh, mace and focus. Mace and focus provide with us a lot of healing. Uh, we've also got some shields in there as well which give us a lot of uh, support and stuff like that so we can take quite a bit of damage. Um, also, the great sword gives us mainly is our mainly damage dealing weapon. We've got the uh, binding blade, which pulls enemies close to us. Um, we've also got quite a bit of AOE in there, and similar wrath, which is giving us retaliation. As retaliation is the key part of this build, the great sword is pretty much required. Uh, for our heal, we've gone for the Signet of Resolve. You could also pick Shelter, but I find the Signet of Resolve is much better. It's a 10 second longer, but the heal is much more powerful and it kills conditions, uh, as this build doesn't have any other condition removal. As far as our utility skills go, we've got the Signet of Judgment, reduces income and dam damage as it's passive, which isn't really that great. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but the uh, active is fantastic. It grants uh, retaliation to us and all our allies and weakness to all of our enemies around us. So obviously it's going to um, get into the retaliation build part of this now. Now. Uh, save yourselves is our second one drawing uh, all conditions from nearby allies and gaining a lot of boons basically you don't want to use this um, if you're actually in danger of any uh, putting a lot of conditions if you're fighting a necromancer who's stacked a lot of conditions on a friend you don't want to be using this because the only condition removal we've got is the signal resolve so it's going to cause some pretty serious issues if you do try to use it it's also a stun breaker uh, so absolutely fantastic skill there use it before just before you get into combat the uh, boons last a long time Last up, we've got Hold the Line Guide to Protection and Regeneration to us and all of our allies. For our Elite skill, we've gone for the Tomb of Courage, though I actually, uh, in the video, we've gone for the Tomb of Courage, but now I would actually swap this out for Renewed Focus. Uh, the Tomb of Courage and the Tomb of Wrath have been changed dramatically. Um, they used to provide you with uh, stability when you were on the uh, spot, which is absolutely brilliant. You, know, you could tank for ages. It was a bit overpowered, though, and now they've, they've removed stability, replaced it with Retaliation or uh, Protection. Downside of this is though, the skills take a huge amount of time to channel so you can just be CC'd and interrupted constantly. So yeah, definitely swapping out for renewed focus now. Basically you're just going to be using it to uh, provide yourself with some invulnerability to hold down a point a bit better. Uh, also obviously you could pop all of your um, virtues and then use that and then it'll all come back up straight away again. So another great use for it there. As far as our armour goes, we've gone for the uh, runes of mercy. This is giving us toughness, uh, take less damage while you revive allies. Uh, allies revive with 20% more HP and you revive allies 10% faster. Lots of different variety in the runes for this build. You can pick a lot of different options. This I liked because it just gives us a bit more support towards our teammates. Uh, we want to be helping get them back up on their feet as well as we can and it works really well to be doing that. In the Great Sword, we've gone for the uh, Superior Life Sigil. This is going to give us 10 plus healing each time we kill a foe. Um, we've gone for the same sigil in the uh, Mace and then in the... Um, Focus, we've gone for the Sigil of the Hydromancer. So this is going to freeze enemies nearby us. So it basically just slows down their uh, cooldowns a little bit so they're getting a little bit more time before they can get off any powerful attacks, that kind of thing. So when you're swapping to the Mace and Focus combo, it means you're being pressured hard. So you want to be slowing down the abilities before they can get them off, which is the reason we've gone for that. Our amulet, we've gone for the uh, Cleric's Amulet, giving us a lot of healing power, toughness, and obviously a bit of power. There's hardly any, there's, well, no condition damage at all, and basically no crit in this build. All your damage is going to be coming in from power. Obviously, there's not a massive amount of it, but um, the main damage source is actually going to be the retaliation. So all these bursty builds, like the Greatsword Warrior, um, for example, uh, are going to take a huge amount of damage. A lot of Elementalists as well are going to take a lot of damage fighting you, because it's going to reflect the damage back at them. Um, it's not very good against condition based builds such as the uh, sword build for a um, warrior for example or perhaps a necromancer, something like that is going to be able to do a lot more damage because the, uh, the damage over time abilities are not reflected. Now as far as our um, traits go, we've gone for 5 points in zeal giving us a symbol of wrath when your health drops below 25% HP. Uh, similar rough is this one here, so it gives us more retaliation and another way just to get retaliation up. Uh, we've got 5 points in Valor, Vigorous Defense, gain Aegis when your health reaches 50%, so yeah, just another little boom there. Uh, backing up the Virtual Courage, we've got that up more often. Uh, honor, we've gone for 30 points, and Virtue, we've gone for 30 points. In Honor, we've got gain 1 second of Vigor when you critical hit. Uh, obviously, that's not going to make any difference. We've got 4% critical hit. It's going to happen very rarely. Uh, Aegis grants retali retaliation when it ends, so again, that's a great way to use that, and you can utilize the uh, virtue of courage to give yourself more retaliation. Admittedly, I don't think that's needed too much. Um, this could be changed up a little bit. I mean, obviously we've got that one there. It does help, it does kick in a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, does, it's not needed too much. Um, you could swap that out for something else if you felt the need for it. 
Selfless daring, the end of your dodge roll heals nearby allies. Uh, obviously, <laughs> brilliant a bit of support it coming in there. Symbols last longer. Again, this is mainly for the uh, symbol of wrath down there, getting up to last a little bit more time. Um, next up, we've got deal more damage at low endurance. So if you're dodging around a lot, which you probably will be doing, you're going to be dishing out a bit more damage. Uh, all symbols heal allies. So again, this is um, going to be just support supporting ourselves, mainly just through the uh, symbol of wrath, basically just to get us some more regeneration and some more healing going on through that. We've also got the symbol of faith, which is going to be dropping down a lot when we need to keep ourselves alive as well. So again, that's going to back us up on that. In virtues, we've gone for inspired virtue. Virtues now apply the following boon. Justice gives us might. Resolve gives us regeneration. And courage gives us protection. Um, obviously, this one you have to have anyway. It's one of the minor traits. But uh, it basically buffs up all these a little bit more, gets you a little bit more out of them. Vengeful retaliation lasts 25% longer. The most important trait in this Build is that one there make sure you have that uh, for 15 points we get gain retaliation when you activate a virtue again it means you're gonna be triggering it uh, more often when you activate these again it's actually not really needed this keeps up so much you don't really need that you could possibly even swap out utility skill maybe um, I found this build just works a little bit better because I guarantee I've got retaliation up all the time uh, I don't I'm not actually a particularly good guardian player I play every profession obviously with hundreds of different builds all week long so I don't perfect anything I didn't really use my virtues too much when I do play um, obviously at the peak you want to be using them all the time um, Intolerable Courage, I think that's what it says anyway. Um, virtue of Courage grants 3 seconds of stability, Virtue of Courage passive effect triggers every 30 seconds. So again, just buffing up um, the Virtue of Courage a little bit more to um, basically instead of triggering all the t uh, taking ages to trigger, it's going to trigger a little bit quicker. It takes 40 seconds originally and now it's only going to take 30, so that's obviously a nice little boon for us there. Power of the Virtuous, deal extra damage for each boon you have. Again, this is going to make save yourselves a really good thing because it's going to give us actually more damage as well because it's giving us a huge number of boons. And we maintain boons all the time through things like the Hold, hold the Line. Um, we just constantly have boons up with this build all nearly enough all the time throughout the match. Absolute uh, Resolution, activating a Virtual Resolve removes three conditions. Virtual Resolve passive effect is stronger. So this basically just makes this a condition removal if we need it. So it gives us a little bit of extra condition removal apart from the Signet of Resolve. Um, so yeah, sorry, the Signet of Resolve is the heal. The Virtue of Resolve is this one here. I just thought I'd explain that just to make sure we definitely got that down. So we're about to get into the start of the match. I hope you enjoy the video. So we're going to be playing on the Legacy of the Foe Fight. As you can see, we're playing for the blue team as well. Uh, you saw us there getting a Swiftness Boon off of our teammate. That's just good practice. It's getting really annoying being in structured PvP and not seeing people popping that Swiftness Boon when you've got a range there of a Warhorn. They're stood right next to you and they don't use it at the start of the match. It's just strange. Make sure you're using it. You want to get everyone around the map a bit quicker. Don't expect someone else to do it. And even if they do do it, Swiftness stacks in duration anyway, so you're just travelling fast for a longer period of time it makes no difference at all so we're engaging on the central point pulling in players towards us trying to stop them getting off an initial burst that's a good move there to pop your number five right at the beginning and you can stop them getting off that burst damage if they're built for that um, we've got a necromancer and an engineer we're fighting against at the moment uh, number four there make it, makes a great great gap closer on the uh, great sword itself We've got an engineer from our own team supporting us as well, so you can see us not taking a great deal of damage really. Uh, we're trying to keep up regeneration whenever we need it. Um, from what we've got, our, we've still got our third utility skill available if we do happen to need it. We push one of their players back there as well. This is an important note. We didn't chase; we just let them get pushed back, uh, and we're gaining control over the central point. This engineer is staying and just going to try and fight. He's doing a good job of tanking. Let's be fair, um, but he's not going to be able to hold off for much longer against this uh, pressure was being applied to him now. Uh, there seems to be getting some support, there we go, an elementalist coming in there for the red team. We're going to be able to finish off this engineer though. Or are we not? No, we do manage to get him finished off, uh, applied some pressure to the uh, elementalist there to make him retreat. Our teammates did a good job of doing that. Um, he shouldn't really have retreated, he should have got his teammate back up. He had wasn't really under too much pressure, he should have really been capable of getting his teammate back up on their feet there. Um, so a little bit of bad practice there from the red team. So now we've got the Elementalist coming back into the fray. So we're coming towards them there, using our number 5 skill and using that to pull them down into the battle. It's a great use of the number 5 um, to pull players down. Absolutely fantastic. A Thief can use a very similar skill as one of their utilities. Uh, and on this map, it's very important because you will see a lot of ranged classes, like this Engineer right now, camping up there and just uh, dishing out damage. So we've got switched over to our uh, Mace and Focus weapon setup. Uh, this is because we just want to be defending our teammate, getting on top of him there, uh, laying down some support. For some reason, he moved out 
out of our uh, bubbles that were protecting him. Uh, he's actually brought down, but this engineer has basically been causing us issues. But because we've got those uh, runes to help us rally faster, we get our teammate back up nice and quickly. Uh, we're going to have a free V two encounter up here again using number five there to pull down their teammate i'm actually going to slow this fight down a little bit um so we can look at it a little bit closer So we're bringing down that engineer there, just spiking them down. It's a good thing to learn your timings on that. You want to be able to work out whether you're going to be able to finish them off before their teammate can revive them. It's a very important thing to learn. And just pay attention to it. It's something that just comes with time. Um, so the red team have been taking a bit of a beating. They're trying to get another one of their teammates back up now. And we're getting actually pulled away. We're trying to go for a finisher there. Uh, and now we've been surrounded by, by uh, the Guardian's Ring of Warding. So we've got to stay inside of this. We don't want to be moving too far. We've switched over to our mace and popping our elite skill now as well. So this is the problem you're going to see now with the uh, tombs on the Guardian now. It's just so hard to actually get the abilities off. You saw us there getting interrupted on the number four. We're going to manage to get number five off because they are distracted. Uh, which is going to heal us and our teammate back up to full HP. So that's obviously going to help us a lot in this encounter now. And hopefully we'll be able to finish off him. But he actually gets back up. So good play there from the red team indeed. Again, you just see the problem with this um, elite at the moment. It's only the four and five that are really of any real importance. And we just get interrupted when we try to get them off. Actually speed the video back up now, back up to a more normal pace uh, for the rest of this encounter. So we're dropping uh, down to quite a few of their players there quite quickly. Um... This Guardian we're fighting against now does just seem to be using a fairly more uh, just a supportive uh, sort of build. You can see he's got the protection boon up with the um, tomb symbol. So that basically means you know you know without checking that he's using the uh, supportive tomb rather than the offensive tomb. So you can try and spike him down. Um, obviously pay attention for his large heal if he's channeling ability for a long time. It probably means it's going to be number 5 heal which is very very strong and you want to be keeping an eye out for that. Uh, you can see down on the bottom right hand side above our uh, utility skills we've got a thing that says 25 that's our stack of uh, healing power coming in from the uh, sigils of life in our weapons uh, it actually stacks up 5 points now per kill so it's obviously very important to have those that definitely uh, been boosted up a lot to make them a lot more useful you start off a little bit weaker but uh, if you can stay alive for a long time if you're playing a tanky profession like this it's definitely a good uh, sigil choice so we're over at the waterfall now engaging in this battle over here there's quite a few players from the red team um, but we're actually because it's such a close uh, encounter sort of area on the top of this uh, point and the players don't really want to run off of it you can actually AoE very effectively making the great sword a fantastic weapon choice uh, for this section of the map unlike the middle where they can obviously stand outside of AoE range um, AoEs are less effective on the central point of the map because of that. So we're not hanging around there. Our team, we've got it down to 1v1. We know our teammate can hold them off. We've got control of the point. He's not going to get pushed out of it. So we can head back to the middle and try to take that point back for our team. It's very important in Guild Wars 2 not to be hanging about. You don't want to be staying on a single point for a particularly long, large amount of time. There's no need for it. You don't need to be doing that. Um, so we're engaging now against this uh, Necromancer. You can see how uh, damaging this build still is against a fairly squishy target. Necromancers can be built very tanky. This one was not. Uh, in our Scepter and Focus uh, setup at the moment, you saw us there stacking up our shields on top of each other just to provide us with as much defense as possible. Uh, we've also popped our third utility skill as well, which has got us protection and regeneration up uh, for a short amount of time. Regeneration stays up fairly often um, with this build. It's fairly constant. So we've got our number five up on him at the moment, so we're able to interrupt him if we needed to. It's going to run out, so we tried to use it. He actually managed to evade it uh, through using, I think, it was um, a sort of a spectral form ability he had up for a second there. Um, so we're not actually managing to cap this point. This Necromancer is doing a pretty good job of tanking us. He's actually got some support fire coming in as well. We tried to pop our supportive skills on the mace. We're actually brought down. That was an engineer there coming in and nuking us down with hip shot. I do believe uh, using a rifle. Very, very powerful skill if they're not uh, dealt with. They can just launch the shots off repeatedly. Seven hits and they did 5,000 damage. The fairly effective um, use of the terrain there by that engineer. And it basically caught us off guard. The problem was, I'll just flip the camera back a second so you can see. Um... A little bit further back than that. All right, our camera angle throughout this fight is looking down a bit too much. Uh, you can't. You can see the actual shots coming in there um, at the back of the screen. You can see the net turret shooting in there um, from one of their shots. Um, our camera angle is pointing so far down we couldn't actually even see him up on the ledge. That was causing us the biggest problem uh, in this fight in um, in general. Just get back up to uh, where we're respawning. 
So yeah, that was the biggest problem. We were looking down at the ground. This is the problem with fighting Azura is they you tend to focus the camera down. I noticed a lot of people doing. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of people playing. You tend to actually focus the camera down towards them. Um, whereas if you're playing a Norn, you tend to focus the camera up a bit more. Even though it's just it's just some sort of habit that people seem to have, and I have it myself. Um, but it's definitely time to try and get out of practice of doing. You want to have your camera fairly. Not not facing directly down or directly up, but just sort of behind your character and slightly tilted. Um, so you, again, we're going we're going too far down. We're looking too far over the map. It's slightly better than it was before, but we get worse. Uh, that is the, one of the big issues at the moment when you're fighting with these different height professions and the way just the camera works when you're so far zoomed out is we can't actually see any of the ledges around us, so we cannot be able to tell our teammates what's going on. Uh, combo fields as well, it's something we're going to be actually looking at in a tips and tricks video fairly soon in the next few weeks uh, It's something I really want to get into, it's a key part of the meta for this game at the moment is the combo field It's something really important that people need to be paying attention to And with this build, if you actually lay down the number 2 ability on the great and the number 4 you can get an um, retaliation um, combo field trigger on yourself uh, which is absolutely brilliant because it gives you another way to keep up retaliation a little bit more you notice as well that I said before I this is me playing like I said before I'm not the best I play so many different professions and so many different builds it is hard to perfect anything I'm not using the virtues this is something I really should be doing um, throughout this match and I will just say it it's it is an issue that in my gameplay style for this character um, but yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of better, lot better players who are definitely very effective at using that. You saw the power of that heal then there as well, bringing us back up to 4 HP, very, very strong. We're fighting against two very bursty professions here at the moment, an Elementalist and a uh, Warrior, but we're going to be spiked down, unfortunately. Uh, it's a little bit too much pressure for us there. If we had perhaps used our Virtues, that might have kept us alive. In fact, triggering the... Uh, um, Second virtue, the healing one with this build actually gives you like about 4k HP, which is quite a lot considering this build only has 13k HP. In total, it relies a lot on its toughness and the heavy armor to stay alive. Um, so the game is coming towards a close, even though it doesn't really look like it at the moment. Um, you can see the blue team have lost all control of their points. This is because a large group of us have gone down towards their base. So it's le leaving just, uh, I think it's me and maybe one other player, to try to just hold off from capping the other points uh, as much as possible. Yeah, we've got one other player over there at the waterfall, while the rest of the team is headed towards the um, enemy team's base to try and defeat their lord, because we can get the uh, final kill and push us over the top. Um, it's definitely a better tactic, I would say, to go for the lord at the end of the match rather than at the beginning. I've seen many teams try to make a move at the start of the match to go for it, and it generally fails. It's definitely a better tactic to go at the end. Um, and just, you've got to calculate it. You've got to take the risk assessment in your head. You don't want to commit all your players. You want to leave someone up there so they don't capture all three points, because if you do fail to kill the guild lord, you're going to be in serious trouble if they've got control of all three points on the map. Um, so we're engaging now against this uh, engineer again. Again, we get hitting shield on them there with our weapon swap and uh, using our um, abilities there on the um, mace to give us some support and the focus there giving us some support as well. Back over to the greatsword after exhausting all the abilities on the mace. You are still fairly tanky with the greatsword. I did say before that it's the more offensive weapon, but it does still give you um, a fair bit of utility and stuff like that. Because you've got the number five, which you can use to fantastically interrupt players. If you set it up uh, just before you think they're going to lay down a burst, you can use it to pull them in. Definitely a good move at the start of a fight as well against bursty professions like a greatsword warrior that often are coming straight in with their offensive abilities. Uh, this engineer is basically doing a very good job of just tanking. Uh, tanking us around, he's not dishing out a massive amount of damage, which means he's not getting spiked down um, from the retaliation. So, we're not going to be able to really win this encounter. But we're up here keeping him distracted and trying to keep the rest of the teammates distracted um, while our team finish off the boss back in their base. Using our number 5 skill there to interrupt them to get us a chance to get our heal off. Again, absolutely great use of that. Uh, we should really be popping our number 2 utility skill at the moment. Uh, that will give us a lot more survivability. We're going to get brought down, unfortunately, there. Um, but our teammates are doing a fantastic job. They are actually right in their base right now. Uh, I think they bring it down in a few seconds time. You see there's quite an encounter going on at the waterfall at the moment as well. Um, and many of our team had to fall back to that point um, to try to defend it. As you can see, the Red Team managed to cap a couple points on us. Um, which, is, like I said, is the issue of going for these Guild Lords. You, if you don't cap it quickly, they make a comeback quite quickly. You see the scores are evening up pretty fast now. I, I've i played this game, so I know what happens. We're going to kill the Guild Lord um, very shortly, we've got one. I think we've got one warrior down there um, who's fighting. He's trying to engage the guild. It took him a couple of tries. He's got interrupted by a necromancer during the game. Um, 
but yeah, basically, it's a fairly solid tactic. You just don't want to commit too many players. That was the problem we made in this match. There we go, we do win. That's the problem we made in this match. We committed too many players. Um, we should really just commit two or three to it rather than committing, um, I think it was four, and then it went down to three players. We should have done it a little bit differently. But yeah, anyway, that was a good match to commentate on, and you saw how this build sort of works, and how you can play it. And you can also see how to counter it as well. If you're staying at range, um, trying to avoid the number five skill as well. If you see him spinning around, you want to be trying to move backwards because if you get out of range, it actually uh, disengages the ability on that so it's a very good tactic to be using hope you enjoyed this video leave me some comments and feedback below thank you very much